Today, we're looking at a red ink by Noodler's Alamo's Twilight. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. Now, if you like red inks, there's a link to that playlist down in the description. I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. Let's get into 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Look at how brown goes darker to lighter. Quick goes dark to light to dark. The is very dark, especially underneath the word quick. Nine seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen. It does shade as brown goes dark to light to dark and lazy goes dark to light. 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show some color variation and I think it shows a little better in the writing. And the smear test, you could likely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. To make sure there's a range of experience with this ink, all the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Pelican M205 with a double broad nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. Let's look at the second writing sample done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, it is shading. Look at how the L of Noodlers is much darker than how the word ends. Alamos starts dark, gets light, and gets dark. The um, extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade very nicely. Quick goes dark to light to dark. Brown goes dark to light to dark, 15 seconds to dry. Now medium being the same tone as the extra fine, it has no feather spread, halo sheen, it has no shading, 21 seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a little color variation and we do get it in the writing and a medium shows none and we had none. The smear test, you could not recover this if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we do see it immediately forming a line on the bottom and pushing its way up. But at the very top, we see this very highlighter type yellow. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water. And that red line across the bottom, much darker, much more there, really bonding with that paper. The red that pushes up is much lighter, showing much more of that yellow highlighter type color at the top. I do think that, that red might want to hold on some. The next writing sample is on 80 GSM Rhodia Dot Pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some spots of shading in twilight. You see it's a mid-tone to light to very dark to mid-tone to very dark. Extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade, quick goes darker to lighter to darker, brown goes darker to lighter, eight seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation. I think it's a little nicer in the writing. The medium shows none and we got none. The smear test says you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would not use this in a note-taking situation because of the blowout that's occurring and in the lowercase h. I'm just risk averse. Water is not really doing a whole lot to remove this from the paper only the darkest part, and the same with pen flush, it's really not breaking this down. It's bonded with the paper very well. The one-third bleach solution is completely removing it. Now, it only took water to get it out of that pen, and that pen, it's a piston filler. So, it's a little bit harder to clean sometimes, but no problems getting this out of the pen. The next writing sample is done on Twisby notebook paper. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, but it does offer decent shading. Like quick goes dark to light to dark. Brown goes dark, works its way light. 
Nice and seven seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread halo sheen, but it does have shading as brown goes dark to light to dark. Nice. Lazy goes dark to light. Nice. The is a much darker word than most of quick. 10 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show color variation and we do get it. And a smear test, you could recover it if you smear while you're writing. And I think that's showing up better in person than on camera. We'll find out when I edit. For the inks tested, the average viscosity is 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Alamo's Twilight has a viscosity of 2.82, making it normal. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity is tested or how that bell curve's made, then there's a link to that video down in the description. Now, let's take a look at Leustrom 1917 paper. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer shading as Alamos goes light to, or sorry, dark to light to dark. Twilight shifts back and forth a lot. The extra fine is, mm, about the same tone as the stub, maybe a hair lighter with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Look at how dark the word the is compared to the word over. Now over goes light to dark. Quick goes dark to light to dark. Brown starts very dark, works its way light to dark. Six seconds to dry. Medium is by far the darkest tone on the page with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and nine seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows color variation because we got it. The medium shows none because there was none. And the smear test, you could not recover this if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time is 17 seconds with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Alamo's Twilight has an average dry time of 13 seconds, putting it right on the edge, but still normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. A lot of bleed, but not bleed through, not touching the page underneath, just leading to an extreme amount of ghosting. Can't use the back of the page, but you're not ruining the page underneath. That medium has a ton of feathering, tiny feathering all over it. I don't know if there's a spot here that doesn't have a feather. It does spread completely. That medium became about a broad. I wouldn't use that on this paper, but you could. It has no halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub. The extra fine does have that same feathering all over it, the entire of it. However, you can read it much more easily. This is not so bad. I'm just not a fan of this lighter tone here. It spreads to about a medium. No halo, no sheen, no shade. One second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation because there wasn't any, but the smear test says you could definitely recover this if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Alamo's Twilight, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice green and I chose Karen Dash Delicate Green. Now, if you'd prefer to look at a different green as its complement or a different color entirely, there's playlists down in the description. So what do I think of Noodler's Alamo's Twilight? I like this rich, dark red. Just a little bit darker and it might dry looking like blood. It gives shading, which is rare with red inks. Not tons of it, but it is there. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience? Don't go with a double broad like I did. That was kind of a mistake. But I would go with a medium flow fine or medium pen to really get a great tone and a very pleasant writing experience with this ink. Not a wet double broad though. <laughs> Made a mistake. I hope you got something out of this video, and tomorrow we're going to take a look at Sailor's Irori, Irori, something like that.